<laughs> the only thing standing in your way is you. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 2 of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season 4. And good god, this season is Ding Dong Bing Bang Bong, which is just British for hot. Anywho, today our queens were challenged to write, record, and perform verses to come alive. Drag Race UK's newest viral hit debuted at the Yastonbury Rock Festival. I'm like so into rock music right now. And the runway category was Neon Nights. So we'll be breaking all that down queen by queen and then at the end of today's video going over Pixie Polite's tweets where she clears the on what actually happened to her entrance look, and she and Lawrence addressed some of the Drag Race fans' fat phobia on Twitter. And yes, I know I'm relentlessly beautiful and confident in drag, but I've also been extremely confident out of drag, and that's thanks to my near flawless skin made possible by today's video sponsor, Curology. I seriously am so proud of my skin on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, just look at it. However, I wasn't always this way. Since puberty, I have fought with breakouts, uneven skin texture, and cystic acne, which, by the way, only got worse several years ago when I started doing drag makeup all the time. I found myself in a torturous cycle of reacting to skin problems as they appeared with random products which gave me no consistency in the appearance of my skin. But all that changed when I started using Curology's simple three-step routine about a year ago now. I use their pH balance cleanser and moisturizer twice a day, and at night I apply my custom Curology formula made just for me by a Curology skincare provider. And after just a few weeks of using Curology, I noticed my breakouts were less frequent and less severe. And no, my skin isn't perfect, and Curology isn't a miracle-working product. But I love using Curology because it brings a consistency and predictability to the appearance of my skin. Signing up for Curology is simple, and you can start by clicking the link in the description of my video. On their site, you'll take a quick quiz to assess your skincare needs and upload three selfies. Next, a Curology skincare provider will take a look at everything and then create a custom formula just for you. And best of all, when you click the link in the description of my video, you'll get your first month of Curology for free. Just pay $5 shipping and handling. Thank you, Curology, for sponsoring this video and bringing a consistency to the appearance of my skin. Now, let's rock out with our frocks out. Ah! Period ah, period ah. Uh. <laughs> First up, and in the order they perform, we've got Baby from Team Triple Threats. So while she and the rest of her team are sitting around the workroom table writing their lyrics, she casually reveals to everyone that, fun fact, she's got a degree in songwriting. Is that a degree in songwriting in your back pocket, or are you just happy to see me? But when she revealed this, I did, conspiracy theory, have a little feeling that Black Peppa may have known this because Baby was her first choice in this challenge as team captain. Regardless of whether or not Peppa had that prior knowledge, though, Baby proved the best choice of the night. She sang, Sizzling and sweet, I'm oh so delicious. Dress like a queen, but I'll give you the business. Step on the scene and I'm taking your interest. Look like a dream, but nobody need pinches. There was just a lot of great imagery in what she was singing with sweet and delicious queen business, then tying that in with interest like the stock market. I'm interested. And the wordplay she did of flipping the phrase, pinch me, I'm dreaming into that last line was really, really fun. This performance was hot, hot, hot across the board. And on the runway, she is giving us all the colors of the neon rainbow. Pink, yellow, orange, green. And my, 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 feathers, chains, and whips excite me. I think she perfectly hit both parts of the brief with this. This is absolutely a night raver girl type of look and certainly is neon in color. The judges though, in particular Graham Norton, were talking about how this look might just be a little too much. And I did not agree with that at all. I thought it was just enough. The one thing I would do is maybe swap out the yellow wig for a pink just to give a little more contrast to the outfit because I do kind of lose the back part of those yellow feathers around the collar with the yellow wig. It just all blends together. In the look, you may recognize the style of a little bit. It's by Bang London, a designer who did lots of Tase's looks. And I love their work for all of the movement that they incorporate in their runways. I think their outfits are absolutely amazing. Go check them out. But this is a phenomenally hot look that absolutely matches Baby's high energy style. And next up tonight, we've got Starlet, who, as we found out, this episode is about 50 shades of uncomfortable with pretty much everything. And I started to realize as I watched Starlet on my screen, I am interpreting that she is mortally terrified of not being perfect. And girl, I feel you, the desire to be perfect. Sometimes it almost kills me. But in my experience, embracing imperfection has taken me a lot further than trying to be perfect all the time. But let's break down this timid little Starlet's performance. She sang, burlesque perfection, vintage collection, 
a face like Monroe. Waist like Monroe. Great lyrics, by the way, but this next little couplet absolutely killed me. Straight out of a movie. I'm a little bit goofy. <laughs> That took me out. It was giving me very, I'm not like the other girls, I'm a little bit goofy vibes. Michelle said it best. Starlet, tell that to your face. Because yes, I actually loved her lyrics, but the actual performance was like watching a reanimated corpse. And all this was just killing me to watch because I really do love this queen. I mean, the level of sophistication and elegance and class in her drag, the way she looks, walking Instagram photo. But girl, when the photo turns into a video, we gotta make it a little more exciting. So yeah, the lyrics were absolutely hot, but the performance was a ratted corpse. And the irony of all of this is she had absolutely no idea idea that she looked dead on stage. In the little untucked moment with her group, everyone is talking about moments where they messed up and she looks them all dead in the eyes and goes, I hate to be that girl, but I felt really confident on that stage. <laughs> Delusion. Convince yourself. But Irma Gerd, for as dull as she was in the performance, she was beautiful on the runway. This look, it is immaculate. It's neon in that beautiful pink crushed velvet accent with all those lovely yellow feathers. It's giving me She Devil by Neon Knight mixed with the pink panther. The silhouette that she has created here is absolutely beautiful and I love how your eye can follow the tip of that triangle tail up to those beautiful horns on the headpiece down to the pointy stiletto boots. Plus the makeup. Good God, the makeup on this queen. <sighs> the devil went down to Georgia, but apparently retired over in the UK. This look is hot. <laughs> Normal girls would never do this, but I'm a little bit goofy. Next up, Sminty Drop. Let's take a look at what she sang. I'm not just a mannequin, I got the dolls panic and long legs, tongue tight. Tell me, can you handle it? Blow you away with a glossy kiss. Modern renaissance with a bad girl twist. They pack big, but I'm back and bigger. Your fees are low, you can watch my figure. Oh my gosh, like who is she? It's my N T Y D R O P. <laughs> she got the entire dictionary in her lyrics, which was ultimately her downfall here because as fun as her lyrics were, she couldn't keep up with her own verse while on stage. She approached this rock song like a typical RuPaul's Drag Race bitch track, but the catch this being a slow song, which featured each girl a little bit longer than normal, was that if they packed their verses too tight, like Sminty did, then they really just made their jobs that much harder. Sminty bit off more than she could chew and dropped it like it was rat. And over on the runway, she's not going to wear an old maiden's dress, but she will wear a troll doll meets Bride of Frankenstein fantasy with pasties. The overall visual effect, I will say, is stunning, striking even to look at. The wiggistry of this sculpted giant beehive thing on her head, I absolutely adore. It makes me think of Aquarius' very first drag on a dime runway she did. It basically is that look, just minus the umbrella. And I'm just pointing that out to say, I do feel like we have seen this type of look several many different times throughout the years on Drag Race, and it's not particularly fresh, except maybe in the colors that she chose, which were just the brief of the runway. So I'm gonna leave this with a two and a half flame warming up. Next up, blonde, John Bruce blonde. And Miss John Bell tonight picked the team name, Triple Threat. Why she picked that name, we may never know. And yes, I'm already getting lost in her lyrics one line in because she wrote so many words like Sminty did and then had trouble even herself fitting them into the song. Shamrock, rock and roll, the blonde pot of gold, a piece of heaven now that you're told, swerving left now, wasn't always right. What does that mean? Had to trust myself when I saw the light. And then she absolutely destroys her verse and not in a good way. Just like potatoes, I'll give variety. <laughs> No ma'am, why are we singing about potatoes in a rock and roll song? A generic potato at that. Like, give me a sexy potato. Maybe loaded. Ooh, a loaded potato. Why don't you come around and load up my potato sometime? But yeah, her performance and lyrics were confusing across the board, and I think she even confused herself on stage a couple of different times. This potato had been left out on the counter for weeks, months, maybe even years, was growing sprouts, and then melted into a puddle of oozing rat. And Joffrey's runway, funnily enough, is kind of giving baked potato wraps and tinfoil getting ready to go into the oven. Her look confused me as much as her performance did tonight. Because she comes out with this sign that says drag is art, and I expected for her to tear it apart. Hi, Sasha Valore. And yes, I am a little bit colorblind, but I will say the purple runway lights on this all orange neon piece made it look a little less neon than it actually was. And had she actually let this look really breathe and have its own orange zest moment on stage without the schmock thing, as the judges pointed out, I think it would have been sold a lot better. I will say though, she might have left the coat on because it appeared to me there were 
were some fit issues in the top part of the look. It just seemed a tad baggy, so maybe she was trying to hide that. Overall though, as presented on the runway, it was just a little lost in translation. I'm gonna give this a and finally on Team Triple Threat, throw out the salt. We don't need it. We've got Black Peppa. And she sang. I'm the NB, Bendy, Caribbean flavor. I'll knock you out. High kick, Mayweather. Do y'all like my legs? Me. Oh my God. When the coffee enema hits. Anyway, the first part of Black Peppa's verse was fun, punchy, and had a lot of personality and Flavor. The second part of it though, I think she just started saying random words from what I understood in the lyrics that were published on WoW Presents. I have backbend, I'm dropping it. You better watch this silhouette. What you garn, wind it. Hot jelly sauce up in the club. <laughs> Dutty wine it, find it, no mind it. <laughs> Entertaining, yes, but all over the place, just like her performance was, and Michelle pointed this out as well. She was twisting, flipping, turning, backbending, death dropping, splitting. She just needed a little more fine tuning and balancing of all the flavors she included in her performance. But I do absolutely want to give her a safe <sighs> for what she delivered here. And Black Peppa on the runway, oh my god. Literally a ray of sunshine on this run. She looks so gorgeous. She's wearing a molded neon yellow silicone dress complete with the giant yellow feather hat. I also love the little nod to Diana Ross playing into the judges favor. We know RuPaul loves her some Diana Ross. On Instagram she said her neon runway was inspired by 90s Terry Mugler supermodels but covered in slime. The slime idea was inspired by watching Slime Time on Nickelodeon channel as a child. I love her references. Black Peppa is truly the supermodel of the Spice Cabinet, and she is absolutely looking hot. <laughs> and now, having looked at each queen from Team Triple Threat, I know I did rot a lot of their performances, but I want to reiterate, I think a lot of their actual songwriting was good. It was just as they talked about when they were in critiquing, way too ambitious. And if the weaker members of the group, and I mean weaker in performance, self-admittedly, Starlip and Sminty, had maybe spoken up a little more about wanting to take things slower, they could have been a lot more cohesive as a group. Because there is a lot of talent in this triple threat group. But there's also a lot of ego. They got a big ego. But a big ego isn't necessarily a bad thing. Seriously, if there's any boys out there with a big ego looking for a good time, oh, give me a call. Because I won't stop till you come. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> Okay. Next up, team number two, the queens of the bone age. Rock and roll, man. And first up, we've got Dakota Schiffer. Hardly know her. And Miss Dakota was an absolute delight on our screens this evening. I love that in-depth storytelling moment they did in the workroom with Dakota talking about her journey as a trans woman, coming out three different times, and how she went through that journey herself with her identical twin and with her parents. And Dakota, as team captain, I think was really great at recognizing her own weaknesses, and as a good leader should be, she was also very aware of her team members' weaknesses. Like when Danny Beard is having trouble with some of the choreo, she checks in. Hey Danny, are you doing okay? And in the challenge, she is just a good team member as she is a leader. She sang, trans activist with the mostest, politically engaged on the best dressed list. Shippers coming to ya, baby. Oh my god, she should get a brand deal with Swiffer. She could Swiff up the competition. Her lyrics, I'll say, weren't the punchiest of what we've heard tonight, but I think she did a great job of staying in the rock and roll vein of storytelling, and I liked when she got a little nasty on the track at the end with that baby. I'm gonna definitely give her a hot. <laughs> on the runway, though, I actually love the dress she's wearing, but you can't even see it. I wish she had done this look without the puffer coat, get rid of those headphones, they're just a little obviously headphones, and I didn't understand why the Pikachu ears were on there at all. And then I would love to have seen her add some black into this look, like on the wig and maybe some black color blocking squares on the dress. Doing so would have been very in line with her 60s mod fashion inspiration, and I think added a bit more chicness to this look, which ultimately is giving Apre Ski more than I think neon lights. So I'm gonna give this like a pika pika rat. Next up, let's get the filled together. And girl, was she dancing? She did enough dancing for all of her team members combined. This girl has more energy than RuPaul after three coffee enemas. She sang, oh, I whip my hair to smash gender roles. Don't try to box me in, I'll smash the glass ceiling. And it could just be me, but I loved these lyrics. I think she did such a good job really truly giving rock and roll. Plus you could tell she was having the time of her life on stage. 
works. She truly was a professional rock and roller. And I'm gonna give her five flames for the lyrics and five for the performance for 10 out of 10 <laughs> flames here. But over on the runway, this look was really interesting because I learned a lot from it. This look is intended to be a nod to when Naomi Campbell was sentenced to pick up trash as a part of community service for being found guilty in a court case where she threw her Blackberry at her maid. And in this five days of community service she was sentenced to, she notably wore high fashion Vogue style runways to do that in. But I think this look maybe missed the mark a little bit because it's not giving neon nights. And I couldn't actually find any reference photos of Naomi Campbell wearing a highlighter orange vest like you might see on somebody who was doing said community service. So in addition to being a reference that needed, I think, too much explanation, she didn't necessarily hit the brief. And worst of all, we actually didn't even get to see the dress in the runway that they showed on the episode. You can only really see it in the photo they posted over on Instagram. Was that really her fault though? I don't know. But because this overall runway presentation missed the mark in several different ways, for me, I have to give it a rat. Next up, don't turn up the heat or she'll start melting. She's melting. It's Cheddar Gorgeous. Let's talk about her lyrics first. Deity, alien queen, punk rock witch with a twisted dream. Queer your mind, embrace the hazy. I'll get those fluids going crazy. Great lyrics. Perfect for the vein of rock and roll. But the performance part of her performance, girl, she was looking more like a triple threat than a queen of the bone age. You go back and look, almost any time that she is in a shot, she is offbeat, behind on the steps, looking over at the team and seeing what they're doing, trying to catch up. She really, really just missed the mark on the choreography. Gotta give her a rat. But oh my god, on the runway, I'm seeing double, triple, quadruple, quintuple. Wait, sorry, I think it must be the mushrooms. This is one of the best looks of the night. She truly is giving us deity, alien queen here, mushroom alien queen from Mars. Also, trend alert with all of the mushrooms that we've been seeing on RuPaul's Drag Race lately. Willow Pill, Evie Yodley, now Cheddar Gorgeous. <gasps> the holy trinity of mushrooms. Anyways, I don't need to keep tripping over how good this look is. Just open your eyes. It's not just the psychosyllabin. This look is <sighs> Next up, copper top with two peas. Who sang? Ooh, let's rock, let's rock. Rock it in a frock. <laughs> Let me hear you scream. I am a queen. I liked her verse, but it felt like you would hear her and see her do this verse on a kid's show. It was frantic, crazy, high energy, which for this challenge worked very well. This queen is so campy and silly and crazy and I really do actually enjoy her. I hope y'all are not misunderstanding me here. I just can't help but laugh because she's so goofy. Ah. Starlet watching Copper Top. Write that down. Write that down. But yeah, I would definitely give this queen's performance five hot flames and her actual lyrics maybe like three. They weren't that deep, but she rocked the hell out of simple and this performance was overall very hot. Copper top, copper top, copper top, copper top. Let's rock it in a frog. And on the runway, copper top is on the runway and she's dressed like Miss Cracker. Hey. <laughs> This look, I like the jacket and the puff sleeves, but what's killing me on this look are the, I guess you would call them culottes? There's just something about, I think, that poopy brown color of fabric that she has used to construct the baggy part of these shorts that I just am not vibing with. I also do not understand it all how this is supposed to be neon nights where i think the vibe was supposed to be party raver girl more so than whatever kind of tudor french george washington fantasy this is this look is a Next up, Danny Bear. She came up with the team name tonight, which I think was part of the reason this team won tonight. It is such a phenomenal team name. Queens of the Bone Age. And she sang, I'm a she with a beard. You think it's the oddest. I'm not being funny. Why would I be modest? I'm a mother tucking goddess, baby. And her lyrics, I feel similarly as to these as I do about coppers. Not that deep or super personal. However, the way she performed this verse was next level. So high energy, so camp, so rock and roll, baby. This performance was hot. And over on the runway, Denny Beard is giving us a little 60s Valley of the Doll fantasy that is a lot of fun at first glance. The makeup, coat, and wig aspect of this, I am in love 
with. However, the closer she got to the camera, the more I could see those boots or boot covers or pants or whatever is under that sickening dress. And I started to not like the look. They totally threw me off. They're kind of baggy in the back and on the thighs in just not a good way. She even mentions one of the style references is Mars Attacks, iconic. So this is a tough situation for me because the overall presentation, I love, but the details of those boot pant things, her culottes, those are a rot, but the rest is definitely a hot. And finally, she's done peeing polite. She's done being and also done peeing polite. It's Pixie, who comes into this challenge telling us in confessionals that she apparently is in the UK's number one drag girl group and something something about Tia Coffee. And I wanna highlight about Pixie. She was responsible for the group's costumes. Everyone in this group was so cohesive and it really was each of them working together, bringing their different talents and strengths and skills that made this group so phenomenally good tonight. She's saying, get rude, it's anarchy. In in the UK, puns. I quit being polite, stepped into the sun. Excuse me, please, I've arrived. I tr them out, but they might like it using only my thighs. <laughs> I was having flashbacks to that fast food commercial where they're at the order box and they're like, I'll have one thunder thighs, please. And Pacey did an amazing job, I think, of personalizing these lyrics and giving us something memorable to catch on to. Pixie polite, what else do those thighs do? This performance was hot. And over on the runway, the acid trip's not over. Pixie is giving us a beautiful pink and green neon jacket. And what is really special about this is I think that hourglass silhouette that she accomplished with just a coat. I love that she's got the matching gloves, hat, and shoes, head to toe. This look is so cool and also has that trendy, cool kid club vibe that I think I was really expecting from a category like Neon Knights. And usually about 10 inches is all I can take, but if she's offering 22, sure, why not? This look is hot. And now some tea and drama from Miss Pixie Polite. After the premiere air, she tweeted this out about her entrance look. Fun fact, it was actually something I threw together a few days before leaving for Drag Race because what I had ordered arrived after I had already left for the race. That does designer done effed up drag, so if you hate it, blame them. And after the premiere, Pixie was apparently getting some hate from Drag Race fans online. Fans do not send hate, by the way, don't do that. And took to Twitter on the 27th saying this, fat people are expected to be quiet and stay out of the spotlight. I'm not going to apologize for having something to say. If you think that makes me obnoxious, that's a you problem. And the more you compare me to other in the fandom that people have a problem with for being quote too much, maybe think about what queens like Eureka, Ginger, Silky, Candy, or even Lawrence have in common. You can't kill my confidence. And just while we're on the subject, the amount of thinly veiled fat phobia I have experienced in the last few weeks since Meet the Queens is mind boggling, but especially since episode one. And Lawrence Cheney jumped into this conversation as well, sharing her experience in conversations with Pixie that she had on Instagram DMs. Why do I need to send messages like this to plus size girls before they're announced? Grim, mate, grim. It won't change, but you'll grow stronger, Pixie. And in that screenshot, she had said to Pixie, you're a plus size like me. The fans don't like us for this reason, but they don't realize they are being like this. And I know it's not easy to address stuff like this, but I think it just shows how strong of a person Pixie is to be able to openly talk about it. And while we're on this subject, I want to encourage y'all to be a part of the solution and not the problem when you're interacting with people and queens online. Spread love, give hugs, and go tell Pixie Polite how damn fierce she is. Because love trumps hate. And that's on period ah, uh, period uh. <laughs> And finally, wrapping up on this episode, the Queens of the Bone Age get a group win and every member of the group gets a Rupita badge. But with all the good, there is also bad. In the bottom two, we've got John vs. Blonde and Starlight. But before I break down this lip sync, I want to remind y'all that I release exclusive videos every single week over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website. Where members get access to those exclusive weekly videos like reactions to RuPaul's Drag Race and where members get early access to my main channel YouTube videos and access to the Bussy Queen Discord server. And you can join my Patreon by clicking the link in the description of this video and visiting patreon.com slash bussyqueen. Come have some fun with me. See you there. Concerning this lip sync though, as sad as the elimination was, and as much as I did not want to see Starlet go, mostly because I know her unaired runways are going to be sickening as hell, it kind of was her time. It's just gonna take her time to learn how to emote to camera and how to really give that inner cute, fun, goofy uh, personality that I know she does have inside of her. But I sure am gonna miss that goofy little girl. Uh. And finally, for my hottest hats in the challenge, I'm going to give it to Lefil. 
And on the runway, I'll take a slice and give it to Cheddar Gorgeous. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest taunts and they've chosen Baby in the challenge and Cheddar Gorgeous on the runway. But I'd also love to hear from y'all. I love reading your comments. So let me know what y'all thought about this episode and who you think should have been in the bottom, gone home and won the challenge. And finally, I wanna say thank you so much to today's video sponsor, Curology, who you can check out using the link in the description of this video. I've been using Curology for like 10 months now and my skin has truly never looked or felt better. Seriously, check them out. You're gonna love it. And finally, I wanna give a special shout out to Felix Gwing, Skyler J, Richard Mox, Alexandria White, and Thomas Von Dimpang, who've all just joined my Patreon at the Hot in Hottest Hot Tiers. And in the individual, Alicia, Asa, Haeckel, Ashley Brungart, Cyrus, Dicky Fuck, Alicia, Frankie, Hector Simancas, Jeffrey Steenberg, Joseph, Kyle Hermes, Laura, Lissat, Louis Labrador, Puff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matto, Michelle, Your Bell, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Travis, Lefty, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tour over at Patreon.com. See you later. Love ya. Bye. I was perfect. <laughs>